Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. Tom worked in an office. The office was a place with lots of desks, chairs, computers, and people wearing nice clothes. Tom had a desk where he worked with his computer. He clicked on the mouse and typed on the keyboard every day, looking at the big clock on the wall. The clock's hands moved so slowly, and Tom would wait and wait until it was time to go home. Every morning, Tom put on his gray pants and white shirt. He would wear a tie, too, but he did not like it. It was too tight around his neck. He had a cup where he kept his pens and pencils, a phone that rang often, and a small plant that he watered every Monday. The plant was green and a little bit yellow because it did not get any sunlight. Tom felt sad for the plant because, just like him, it was stuck inside the dull office. Tom was not happy at his job. He did the same things every day. He talked to people on the phone, he typed letters on the computer, and he went to meetings where people talked and talked, but nothing fun ever happened. One day, when Tom was extra sad and tired, he walked away from his desk. He walked over to a special desk near the front of the office. The desk was smaller and had a little sign that said, Lisa. Lisa was the secretary. She answered phones, said hello to people who came into the office, and did other jobs that helped everyone. Lisa always wore colorful dresses, pretty shoes, and shiny, bouncy blonde hair. But Tom noticed something. Even though Lisa smiled a lot, her eyes looked a bit sad, just like how he felt inside. Tom said, Hi, Lisa, you always look so nice and seem so happy. But do you like your job? Lisa was surprised by Tom's question. She looked around to make sure nobody was listening and then whispered, No, Tom, I don't really like it. I have to be nice all the time, even when people are not nice to me. I have to smile even when I feel like crying. It's hard. Tom nodded. I understand, Lisa. My job is hard in different ways. I do the same boring things every day. I never get to have fun or be myself. I'm always just Tom from the office. Lisa looked at Tom with soft eyes. She understood how he felt, and Tom understood how she felt too. It was like they both had a secret, a secret of being unhappy in their neat, tidy office. Tom got a silly idea and said, what if we try something different, Lisa? What if I try to do your job for one day and you do mine? Maybe it will be fun to do something new. Lisa laughed a little because the idea was funny and strange. Tom, you cannot do my job. You have to wear dresses and talk in a sweet voice. You have to know how to answer the phones and schedule appointments. It's not as easy as you think. Tom smiled and said, maybe it's not easy, but it might be fun to try something new, and you might like not having to answer the phones for one day. Lisa thought about it. It was a funny idea, but it was also interesting. She had never thought about doing someone else's job before. Tom and Lisa talked and talked, making plans and giggling about their silly idea. And even though they were still in the office, and even though they still had their same jobs, they felt a little spark of excitement in their hearts because they were going to try something new and different. Tom walked towards Lisa's house with his heart making little thumps in his chest. His shoes clicked on the sidewalk, and he thought about how tomorrow his shoes might sound different. It was a warm evening, and the sun was gently saying goodbye to the day, spreading beautiful pink and purple colors across the sky. Lisa's house was cute and inviting, with a little welcome mat that said, hello, in bright, happy letters. Tom knocked on the door, and soon Lisa's friendly face appeared, with her eyes twinkling like two little stars. Hi, Tom, Lisa said warmly. Come in, this is going to be so interesting. Tom stepped inside and looked around. The house was cozy and smelled like vanilla. Pictures of Lisa's friends and family smiled from the walls. It felt like a happy place, and Tom started to feel more excited about their plan. Lisa led Tom to a special room. This room was like a rainbow exploded in it. Dresses, skirts, blouses, and all sorts of clothes hung neatly in rows, and there were shoes of every color and style. There was also a big table with lots of little brushes, powders, and colorful makeup things. Tom's eyes went wide looking at all these new and unfamiliar items. Lisa saw Tom's wide eyes and giggled. Welcome to my dressing room, Tom. 
Are you ready to become me for a day? Tom nodded, his tummy doing little flips of nervousness and excitement. Yes, Lisa, let's try this. Lisa picked out a smart black office suit for girls. It had a neat jacket, a tidy skirt, and it looked very professional, but still kind of girly. She also handed Tom some soft black nylons and a pair of shiny black shoes with little heels. Tom changed into the suit, feeling the smooth fabric against his skin. The jacket was snug, and the skirt felt swishy against his legs. The nylons were a new sensation, clinging softly to his legs, and the shoes made him stand just a little taller. Lisa then offered him a blonde wig, which had straight hair and a serious yet stylish look to it. Tom put it on, feeling the strange weight of hair on his head. He looked in the mirror and saw a different person staring back at him. Lisa then said, Let's add a little makeup, Tom. It will be fun. With gentle hands, Lisa applied some light makeup on Tom's face. A bit of powder to make his skin smooth, a tiny sweep of blush to give his cheeks a little pinkness, a fine line of eyeliner to define his eyes, and a soft, rosy lipstick to finish the look. Tom looked in the mirror again. He saw himself, but also not himself. He was Tom, but also Lisa, in a way. It was very odd, but also interesting. How do you feel, Tom? Lisa asked, her voice full of care and a bit of curiosity. Tom thought for a moment, I feel strange, Lisa, but also kind of fun. It's like I'm in a play and I get to be a different character. Lisa nodded. It's good to try new things sometimes. It lets us see the world in new ways. But remember, no matter what, you're still Tom on the inside. They spent the rest of the evening talking and laughing, sharing stories and joking about how the next day would go. They were both a little nervous, but also couldn't wait to see what would happen. It was an adventure, a step into the unknown, and they were doing it together as friends. As Tom left Lisa's house that night, under the gentle glow of the moon, he thought about what it would be like to walk in Lisa's shoes for a day. He didn't know it yet, but it was going to be a day he would never forget. With the morning sun softly lighting up the sky, Tom woke up feeling a swirl of butterflies in his stomach. Today was the day he was going to be Lisa at the office. He gently got out of bed, his thoughts a mix of excitement and nervousness. He looked at the suit Lisa gave him. The black jacket, the tidy skirt, and the blonde wig all neatly placed on the chair. With a deep breath, he began to get dressed. The nylons were soft and snug on his legs. The skirt felt swishy and new, and the jacket made him feel kind of important. The wig was a bit tickly on his forehead, but it looked nice, turning him into a blonde for the day. When Tom looked in the mirror, he saw someone different. He saw someone who looked a bit like Lisa, but it was still him, Tom inside. He put on the shiny black shoes, and they clicked on the floor as he walked, a sound that was quite different from his usual quiet shoes. Tom walked to the office, his heart doing little jumps inside him. What will people say? He wondered. Will they know it's me? When he opened the door to the office, he felt all the eyes on him. People looked a bit puzzled, wondering where Lisa was and who this new lady was. Tom went to Lisa's desk, his hands a little shaky, and sat down. The chair felt different, softer than his old one. Tom remembered all the things Lisa had told him about doing her job, answering phones, making appointments, and helping with paperwork. The phone rang, and he jumped a little. It was so loud. He picked it up. Hello, this is, um, Lisa speaking. How can I help you? The voice on the other end of the line asked for Mr. Johnson, and Tom tried to remember where Mr. Johnson's office was. His mind felt like a jigsaw puzzle, trying to put pieces in the right places. After talking to people on the phone and helping them, Tom started to notice something. People were really nice to him. They said thank you and smiled. It was different from his old job, where people rarely noticed when he did something well. Throughout the day, Tom helped people, answered calls, and even fixed the copy machine when it got stuck. And even though he was still nervous and made a few little mistakes, he also felt something he hadn't felt in a long time. He felt happy. When it was lunchtime, Tom sat in the break room eating a sandwich that Lisa had packed for him. 
He looked at the other people laughing and talking and realized no one knew he was Tom. To them, he was Lisa. And weirdly enough, it felt nice to be Lisa. It felt nice to be seen and noticed. The afternoon went by in a swish of papers, calls, and clicking of keyboards. Tom started to understand how Lisa did her job every day, how she talked to people and helped them. He also noticed how Lisa's job was important in its own way, even if it was different from his old job. When the day ended and the sun began to set, turning the sky into lovely shades of pink and purple, Tom left the office, his mind buzzing with thoughts and feelings. He had spent a day in Lisa's shoes, doing Lisa's job, and it made him see things in a new way. He realized that every job was important in its own special way, that every person had something valuable to do, and that being kind, helping, and noticing others made you feel warm and fuzzy inside. That night, as Tom got ready for bed, he thought about his day as Lisa and how tomorrow Lisa would be Tom. He thought about all the new things he had learned and felt. The bed was softly inviting, promising a gentle embrace for tired thoughts. Tom slipped under the covers, the day's contemplations whirling like a gentle wind through the mind. The ceiling above became a screen where memories of the past weeks played. Moments of laughter with co-workers, the soft rustle of paper, the sweet scent of the little office plant that sat on Lisa's desk. Could I be Lisa? Not just in the office, but everywhere, every day, Tom whispered into the silent night. Lying there in the dimly lit room, Tom imagined a future. A future where waking up meant not wrestling with the inner turmoil, but welcoming a day with joy, where choosing clothes was not a chore, but a delightful dance of colors and fabrics. A plan began to form, tender and tentative. It involved more than just clothes and makeup. It involved stepping fully into Lisa's shoes, feeling her emotions, understanding her thoughts, and maybe eventually becoming her. This plan included finding out about things like how to talk with Lisa's voice all the time, how to walk with Lisa's gentle grace, and how to perhaps change Tom's body into Lisa's with the help of doctors and special medicines. With thoughts swirling, Tom drifted into a peaceful sleep where dreams painted pictures of a future that was feminine. Days in the office as the secretary became normal and comfortable. Every morning, Lisa would get dressed in neat, girly office clothes, carefully place the blonde wig, and step into the shoes that clicked in a friendly way on the office floor. The co-workers smiled and waved, never suspecting that Lisa and Tom were the same person. As weeks melted into months, something inside of Lisa felt peaceful and right. Every day, the mirror reflected a face that was becoming more and more familiar. The blonde hair, the gently made up face, and the soft clothes felt like they belonged. And the name Lisa sounded just right. One sunny afternoon, Lisa visited a store that sold pretty undergarments. Rows of soft, lacy bras and neat, delicate underpants in all colors of the rainbow greeted Lisa. Carefully, Lisa chose a few in soft pinks, gentle blues, and classic whites, feeling the smooth fabric and admiring the tiny bows. The lady at the counter smiled warmly, and Lisa left the store with a small bag, feeling a quiet thrill in buying something so personal and special. Back at home, Lisa looked at the new undergarments, the lace delicate under fingers. Wearing them felt right and lovely. The soft lace against the skin was like a gentle hug, reassuring and sweet. That night, Lisa looked at the reflection in the mirror, feeling a sort of peace, the wig no longer felt like just a wig, it felt like a part of Lisa. And a thought fluttered into Lisa's mind, delicate like a butterfly. What if I don't have to be Tom anymore? What if I can be Lisa always? Shaving became a regular thing too. The razor slid over skin, removing stubble, and revealing soft, smooth skin underneath. Every stroke of the razor felt like wiping away a tiny part of Tom and revealing more of Lisa. Lisa also started reading about hormones, learning about how they can change a body from a man's into a woman's. The internet told stories of people who had made this journey, shifting from one self to another, finding happiness and peace along the way. Lisa thought a lot about this, wondering if it was another step on this surprising journey. 
One sunny day, Lisa sat in a park, watching kids play and birds flutter around. It was a picture of happy, simple life. And Lisa realized something important. Being Lisa felt more right, more true than being Tom ever did. Lisa decided to visit a doctor, a kind person who understood about people like Lisa, people whose outside didn't match their inside. They talked about feelings, about Lisa's journey from being Tom in an unhappy office job to being Lisa, the secretary who found warmth and welcoming in a new role and a new world. The doctor listened with kind eyes and a gentle nod. They talked about the hormones, about how they would help Lisa become even more like the lady in the mirror. It was a big decision, but Lisa felt ready. Ready to step into a future where the reflection in the mirror was true and right every day. And so Lisa stepped forward, not as Tom pretending to be Lisa, but just as Lisa. A lady who liked pretty undergarments, who loved the swish of a skirt, and who found joy in helping people in the office every day. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.